Hello everybody. In this video, we're going to talk about uh, idealizing our relationship partners. So, you know, do we, how do we think about our partners? Do we really want them to have our ideals? So those are the questions that we will address in this video. So let's get to it. So first let's talk about <clears throat> I, uh, how we think about our partners. In general, we tend to uh, idealize our partners. We tend to, at least when we're uh, happy and when we're satisfied in a relationship. When we're happy and satisfied in a relationship, uh, we tend to um, exaggerate the positive aspects of our relationship. Uh, oh, they're so nice. Oh, we do. We, we have so much fun. Um, you know, we hardly ever fight, you know, things like that. So when people are in happy relationships, they tend to exaggerate the positive qualities of those relationships. Uh, we also, uh, one positive quality that uh, people in uh, certain, in certain, certainly uh, committed relationships tend to have is that um, they tend to perceive them as being uh, more similar, their partners to be more similar to them. So we tend to, um, idealize our relationship partners, and we even tend to attribute things in a way that shows an almost, almost partner-serving bias, much like the self-serving bias. So with the self-serving bias, we will attribute things that paint us in a positive light and prevent us from being painted in a negative light. So if something we might attribute good things or, or, think, or, or uh, things that would imply positive attributes to us, and we attribute negative things or things that would imply negative attributes to our situation. Uh, and we do the same thing with our relationship partners when we're happy, all right? So we have this relationship enhanced, uh, enhancing attribution style. And so we attribute good things uh, about our relationship to the relationship, and we attribute bad things about the relationship to external uh, characteristics. So, you know, if you get into a fight, it's not necessarily that you and your partner don't get along so much as it's, you know, uh, it was a stressful situation. It was a stressful day. Uh, you know, there was a lot of things going on. All right. So in that way, you can attribute something negative <clears throat> to something other than, other, than, other than the relationship, and you can attribute something good like, uh, you know, some, uh, you know, having fun or uh, anything like that to the relationship itself. Now, <clears throat> in less happy, in, in unhappy relationships, you actually see the opposite. You see distress maintaining attribution styles. So this is when you, you, you do the exact opposite. So you attribute good things to the situation and bad things to the relationship. So, you know, if you get into a fight, we just don't get along. Um, uh, that we're just, we just don't have that much in common. Um, whereas, you know, good things like, oh, we had a good day. Well, that's because, you know, so-and-so came to visit or this big event happened and it allowed us to, uh, you know, get our minds off things. So a distress maintaining attribution style is when you attribute good things to anything other than the relationship and bad things to the relationship, but happy relationships tend to have kind of an idyllic attribution style, that relationship enhancing attribution style. So we idolize others, but do we really want our partners to have our ideals? So if we would ideally be ambitious, if we would ideally be intelligent, if we would ideally be you know, wealthy, uh, well, maybe, maybe wealthy is a bad idea or a bad example, but uh, for certain interpersonal traits, <clears throat> if, we are, if we would ideally possess those traits, do we really want our partners to? Well, uh, when they do, and we feel that they are supporting our uh, pursuit of those ideals. So, you know, if, if, if we're with a partner who, if we want to be ambitious, if we would ideally be ambitious in our, and we think our partner is, and we think that they are helping us, that they are supporting us, that they are providing opportunities for us to pursue our ideals, then couples uh, in these situations tend to be better off. They report better couple well-being. And certainly we know that we want our partners to uh, possess our ideals. Research by Matheson Moore show that uh, participants prefer 
potential mates that possess our ideals. And I've mentioned this in another video, uh, and so feel free, and I encourage you to go watch that. So certainly we like it, and our relationships benefit when our partners possess uh, our ideals. But there's some work to suggest that we wouldn't necessarily want that. We wouldn't necessarily want our partners to outperform us in a, in a domain that we care about. Specifically, the self-evaluation maintenance model suggests that <clears throat> we try to maintain a positive self-evaluation. And so we can, that positive self-evaluation can be bolstered or threatened by other people. And, that, and whether it's bolstered or threatened depends on a couple things. One, whether or not our partners are excelling or not. Uh, so that's performance, all right? But really, we only really get threatened, well, primarily they, uh, one of the bigger ways for us to be threatened or for us to kind of benefit from uh, the success of our partners is for them to perform well. So we're gonna limit our discussion here to what happens when our relationship partner is performing well. The other two variables are what domain they're performing well in, all right, and how close we are to that partner. So <clears throat> the self-evaluation maintenance model argues that um, with a relationship partner, we may compare ourselves to them, and if we do, and they are excelling, uh, then in a domain that we care about, then we tend to feel a sense of threatened self-evaluation, self which would motivate us to switch, uh, begin in, uh, working on some other domain or you know, room, uh, in that relationship. Um, but <clears throat> if they are performing well in a domain that we don't really care about, then we can bask in their reflected glory. But this, these two scenarios, when they're when they perform well in a domain that we care about, um, we compare and we it threatens our self evaluation. Versus when they perform well in a domain we don't care about, um, we reflect. This is only and we can reflect in the uh, reflected glory. This is only true of people that we're close to. All right, so relationship partners, right? So again, you know, this whole video we've been talking about idealizing our romantic partners, right? <clears throat> Well, when we're with a romantic partner who we're close to, so we're high in closeness, right? If they perform well in domain we care about, so high relevance, then we tend to compare ourselves to them and, we, and our self-evaluation is threatened. So we don't like that. Like I said, we're motivated to do one of several things, one of which is in the relationship. If we're, if a relationship partner, again, who we're close to, so if we're in a relationship with someone we're close to them, perform well in a domain that we don't care about, so it's it's not directly relevant to us, right? So it's not an ideal that we have for ourselves, then we can reflect, uh, we, can get, we can get engaged in reflection, and we can bask in the reflected glory. Basically, we can feel happy for them, and uh, we can kind of uh, get some positive self-evaluation from the success of our close relationship partner. But, when it's someone that we don't care about, so it's not a relationship partner, they're not even a friend, we're not close to them, whether they perform well or not is largely irrelevant, all right? So we engage in neither comparison nor reflection, all right? So according to the self-evaluation maintenance model, we wouldn't want our relationship partners to uh, benefit or, or to outdo us in a domain. And certainly uh, work that I mentioned earlier here with Herbst, uh, uh, the work by Herbst and colleagues reveals that indeed, when our partners begin to outperform us in, in an ideal uh, domain, we tend to uh, be, we, t we don't tend to like them as much, all right? So we <clears throat> idealize, our relationship partners, especially when we're happy in those relationships. And we benefit when our relationship partners help us reach our ideals. But we don't really seem to like it when they begin to outperform us in things that we ideally want to do. All right. 
because then according to the self-evaluation maintenance model that triggers uh, self-reflection or sorry a, a comparison which threatens our self-evaluation all right guys that's it for this video as always if you have any questions please send them my way uh, if not have a great one and i'll see you next time